And so I'm here to talk to you guys. I know some of you guys are in tech and media and you guys might be pursuing uh, careers in that direction, whether it's web design or videography, graphic design. And these are all uh, services that we do inside Butler Branding. So a little bit about where we're going. Uh, I'll, I'll talk to you about who I am. Uh, talk to you about my company. I'll talk about some of the stuff that I've learned along the way. And the, the bulk of what I want to do is just answer any questions you guys might have. So this is going to really suck at the end if you have no questions. So try to prepare any questions you have or else I'm just going to be standing up here looking at you all awkwardly. Uh, this is me and my family. I have a beautiful wife named Candace and three boys. We tried twice for a girl. I could only make boys. Um, and they're five, nine, and 11. Uh, I've had the privilege of raising these boys and trying to figure out what I'm doing along the way. Uh, in November, I'm actually going to India with my oldest. Uh, you, I think you might have saw one of the clips um, in that video of uh, a countryside in India, and that's one of the clients that I've been able to work with. So my business has allowed me the opportunity to travel, and now I get to travel with my son next month. Uh, on the right side is my church family. The Word Community Church is a huge part of my life, and I know that uh, some of you guys, if you're an FCA, might know my friend Dwayne Coleman, who uh, is pastor here at Fresno High, and uh, he's a good buddy of mine as well. And this is my work family. This is Butler Branding. We are a team of eight, and we do everything from graphic design, videography, marketing, uh, web design, the whole gambit. This is kind of like our elevator pitch, right? We tell people that we communicate the right message to the right people on the right channels. And the way I do that is through strategy, design, and marketing. So here's a list of all the services that we do. Some of you guys might be interested in uh, one of these. Um, so brand strategy, I'm the lead strategist. I had no idea growing up what the heck that meant or that I would be that. It's just something I kind of fell into along the way. Uh, we do identity design. A lot of you guys know that as logos and graphics. Uh, but that also includes videography, photography, uh, anything that needs to be uh, visually designed. Website design is a huge part of what we do. We started out as a small boutique web design agency, and then uh, throughout the years, we grew into working with a lot larger businesses. Videography is probably one of the coolest things we do. I love doing videography. I myself am not a videographer. I act as the director of photography on set, and so I get to kind of like write scripts and storyboards and direct the videos that we're gonna shoot, and then marketing. I do all of these things okay. I have a really good team of people who do them excellently, and so that we'll talk a little bit about that. Here's some of the um, graphics or logos we've designed. This is just a small sampling. We ha we've uh, got the opportunity to work with a lot of really cool companies and design cool stuff. This is Mid India Christian Mission. It's one of the, uh, my favorite organizations to work with. Been working with them for about four or five years. And uh, again, I've been able to travel the world with them. I've been able to help them position their brand uh, to, to grow as an organization. Uh, some of you guys know Cup of Joy, right across the street, best coffee in the world. We're able to do pretty much all the design that uh, comes out of that coffee shop. And we started with Zach, who's the owner there, uh, when he first started. He was a small coffee shop in Clovis. Then he expanded into Fresno, which is right across the street. Then now he's got about like four or five shops here in town. He's from Madeira all the way to Kingsburg. And now they roast their own coffee. And we're able to design all the packaging and do all the marketing for him. So that's one of our cool projects. Uh, Wicked Harvest Bourbon, uh, this is just a, uh, we, we're not supposed to talk about that, it's high school, so we'll go to the next slide. <laughs> uh, we also get to do cool things like this. This is a, an awareness campaign for Camarena Health in partnership with Madera County Schools. And so this is a Break the Stigma campaign, so we're able to do all the design work for this uh, to spread awareness about mental health issues, right? It's time to talk about mental health, and so we want to start spreading awareness and to break the stigma, to normalize issues around mental health so that we can get the help that we need. All right, so those are just some of the clients, and if you guys have any questions about any of the clients that we worked with, um, we'll save those for the end. So I'm gonna primarily be talking from the standpoint of an entrepreneur. So I know you guys are in media and tech and you might wanna do things like web design and, and actually do the work. Uh, for me, I'm gonna be coming from the perspective of the guy who owns the business because that's just all I know. I know a little bit about all the other things. So if you have technical questions, I might be able to help, uh, but usually I defer that to my staff. So uh, why be an entrepreneur? This is my personal journey. Hopefully it resonates with some of you guys. Uh, first, I always love to draw and create things. These are just some of the things that I do in my spare time. Uh, in school, I was 
pretty much a terrible student. All I would do is draw, and I, I had uh, ADD, so it was like attention deficit. I couldn't really pay attention. I really thought I was stupid like half my life until I was an adult and I learned how to learn for myself. Uh, you know, people that have ADD, they just learn differently, right? And so when you have a classroom full of 45 kids, it's kind of hard to spend that one-on-one -on -one time with each kid individually, so they, they make curriculum that kind of appeals to the, the broad majority of people. Well, since I didn't fit that mold, I didn't learn the same way everybody else did. Therefore, I thought I was dumb, and so I just check out and, and draw all day, which led to me being a terrible student. I'm not really sure how I graduated high school, but that's about all I have is a high school diploma. I never went to college. Uh, and that was never really pushed on me by my parents. They never said, hey, go to college and you're gonna be successful. They told me, uh, Sean, you can do anything you want. My dad was an immigrant from the Philippines. Uh, my mom was a female entrepreneur in the 80s. Neither of them had a college degree, yet they were able to have a level of success for themselves. And so, um, yeah, I was never a really good student. So on the one hand, I like to draw and to create stuff. On the other hand, I was a terrible student and I knew that I didn't wanna work for anybody else. I had jobs and I was, uh, as much as I was a terrible student, I was also a pretty bad employee. I didn't, I, I never fit the mold of being told exactly what to do, where to be, when to be there, ask permission to go on break, uh, ask permission if I had to take a day off. I wasn't really lazy. I was just like, I, I, I don't fit that mold. I want to, meet, uh, to get the work done the way I want to get it done. And so I didn't really want to work for anybody else. And then the other thing is I had uh, big dreams. And so I, I didn't want to work for anybody else. I wasn't a good student and I have all these aspirations, right? If you just have those things, then you end up being 35 years old playing video games on your mom's couch, still not knowing what to do with your life. And so I had, to, I had a game plan. Uh, one is I wanted to be a good husband and father first. I wanted to own a business. I wanted to do something fun. It would be like soul sucking and draining for me to, to own a business that was boring. And so I wanted to do something that I like to do. And uh, I wanted to make enough money to fund whatever dreams I had. And I want to change the world, right? So that's uh, not a big deal, right? But I had no education, no experience. Um, and so it wasn't necessarily great on. So I'll tell you a little bit, I'll, we'll go through a timeline of how I started my business. So 2012, no college education. I just got laid off in construction. I was working at a bar and then I got a part-time job working for my mom's business. And I was like, man, I don't want to work for my family the whole, the rest of my life. I need to start something. And so this is when I had the idea to start my business in 2012. It was, I, I probably started too soon. A lot of people overthink things and they, they start way too late. For me, maybe I'm just dumb enough to not ask all the right questions and I just did it. And it's kind of like building the runway as you're landing the plane. And so I just figured it out as I went. So 2012, I said, yeah, I'm gonna start a business. This is gonna be awesome. 2014, it was hard. I wasn't making enough money. I uh, was paying my staff more than I was paying myself. I said, this sucks, I'm gonna quit. I gotta get a job somewhere else. And that, that was just a thought that crept into my head. 2015, I was like, okay, no, I'm gonna make this work. I gotta figure something out. So even though I didn't go to school, I knew that I had to be educated. So I had to learn some things. And so what I did was I took myself to YouTube University and I started reading books. I started reading blogs. I started educating myself on how uh, media and marketing technology and website, uh, web design and search engine optimization worked. And I started learning all these things. And I said, okay, uh, but the number one thing that was the game changer for me is I met my mentor. In 2016, I found a YouTube channel called The Future. At that time, it was called The School, but uh, it was this guy named Chris Doe who owns a big agency in LA. They work with billion dollar companies doing pretty cool things. And he had a YouTube channel teaching the business of design. And so I reached out to him just you know, online. I, I figured, hey, what, the worst he could do is, is ignore it and I don't hear back from him. But I, I played my bet and I reached out to him and he uh, surprisingly responded back. So we started a dialogue and he offered to coach me. And so he started coaching me in 2016, uh, teaching me all the things that I needed to know about business. 2017 was the game-changing year for us is when we leveled up in our level of service. We went from working with small mom and pop shop companies that only had like thousand dollar budgets. And think about this, when you're an adult, you have your bills to pay, right? Most people have their mortgage or their rent or they have a car payment and their cell phone. You have, you know, add up all the money and at the end, that's what they call your overhead costs, right? That's your monthly expenses. Well, when you own a business, not only do you have your monthly expenses, but you have the business's monthly expenses. 
And if you have employees, then you have all of their monthly expenses. And I had five employees and my monthly expenses was about $20,000 a month. So that means I had to make 20 G's a month just to be at zero at the next month. Working on thousand dollar websites means that I had to sell 15 to 20 projects every month just to be at zero. That's why I was driving myself nuts and I wanted to quit. Then I met my coach, he helped us level up to where we were working on much bigger, bigger projects, working on fewer projects more closely for a lot more money. And in 2017, we're able to enjoy the fruits of our labor. 2018 until now is uh, now it's time to scale and grow again. We've grown year over year uh, since we started. And now 2019, uh, my, my goal <clears throat> was to give back. So now I'm coaching other agencies and helping them grow their, their creative business. One of the, the key things in growing the business is building a good team. Again, I have been pretty good. I've been pretty okay at a lot of things my whole life. So I, I, I'm the kind of guy that had all kinds of hobbies. So I love to draw, but I also love to play guitar. I also like to snowboard. I was into skating. I was into weightlifting. I was into like a, all kinds of different things. I had a million different hobbies and I was never really excellent at any of them. I was like mediocre at all of them. <clears throat> but when I did my business, I was like, you know, I don't want to have a mediocre business. I want to put out amazing content. And so what I had to do is leverage my weakness by uh, getting surrounding myself with a really good team. And so my team, I'm, I'm the least educated person in my company. Uh, every, all of my employees are uh, really smart and I love being the stupidest person in the room uh, because it helps us grow and do pretty cool things. So a few things I've learned along the way is that if you want to work for yourself, anybody could do it. I've met so many different entrepreneurs in all kinds of different walks of life. Doesn't, you don't have to have a staff. You don't have to work on you know, billion dollar projects or anything like that. If you wanna work for yourself, anybody can do it. Most of the people that want to do it, but don't end up doing it is because they have some sort of excuse as to why their unique situation is so special and they're uniquely cursed in life and can't do things. No, I think I've seen people with the worst situations be able to crawl themselves out. It's just a mindset. 90% of owning a business is is a mindset issue. So excuses are worthless. Everybody has obstacles. It's the ones who are willing to put in the work to overcome those obstacles that get you to your goals. Second thing is uh, be a lifelong learner. I told you I was, I felt like I was dumb in high school. I never learned really anything in school. And that's just my, I know I'm not supposed to say that here because I'm out of school and I'm encouraging you guys to be good students and learners. Uh, but for me, I never really started learning until after school because I learned how to learn. I learned a program and a regiment that worked for me to where I could understand and take in and retain information. And so when I learned how to do that, I became a lifelong learner. I started surrounding myself with smarter people, started reading a lot of books, I started doing research, and I became a lifelong learner. If you're coasting in life, you can't really coast uphill. You're gonna be going downhill. So you develop the habit of personal growth. Habits are kind of those things that like you don't want it, right? So th there's, there's a, there's discipline and there's habits. So habit is just like, I don't have to remind you guys to, to breathe, right? It's just a habit. We're doing it naturally. It just comes naturally for us. Uh, but a discipline, these are the things that don't come naturally for us that you're going to kind of have to force yourself to do. So the goal is like, man, I don't like reading. I don't like learning. I don't like growing. Well, nobody likes these things at first. It's kind of like working out. You develop the discipline to do the hard things consistently until they become a habit. Then it becomes second nature and it isn't so exhausting. Uh, next thing is surround yourself with mentors. Um, I found my business mentor in 2016 and it changed my life. Uh, and what I've uh, incorporated is the philosophy of surrounding myself with mentors in every aspect of my life. Uh, before, uh, when my wife and I first got married, I was kind of an idiot. And when me and her got in fights, I would go hang out at the bar with my friends who are not married, who are single and probably on their third bad relationship uh, in a long time. And I'm talking to them about my relational issues. Well, why am I getting advice from someone who can't speak on the issue, right? And so I started to surround myself with people who were married for a long time, started hanging out with older people, started hanging out with people that had good relationships and started getting mentorship around my marriage. Well, I did the same thing with business. I did the same thing with every aspect of my life. They, there, there's a saying that says that you're the average of the five people you hang around the most. So if you hang around with five knuckleheads, you're the sixth, right? If you hang out with five smart people who are going somewhere in life, 
then you're going to be the sixth. And so the, the power of your association, I can't speak on enough. The next thing is uh, be a servant to everybody. Um, I used to be really self-seeking. Everything that I did was really just for myself. I wanted to advance myself. I wanted to make enough money. I want to build this big empire or whatever. And when I stopped thinking about myself so much and started thinking about how I could serve other people, things started kind of lining up. And there's this law, it's called reciprocity, right? Reciprocal, I give you something and I'm expecting something in return. And a lot of people, they serve that way. Like I'm gonna serve because I think that they're, I'm gonna be served back. Well, I think you, you should just be a decent human being and serve as many people as you possibly can just because it's the right thing to do. And yes, the law of reciprocity kicks in that you're always, always gonna get helped in whatever area you need, but it's just the right thing to do. Next thing is to have a clearly defined why, right? Uh, why do you exist? Why, what, what is your purpose in life? You know, I don't expect you guys in high school to have that all figured out right now. There's a lot of things you guys are learning and there's some life experiences that you need to have, but you gotta be thinking about this. Uh, having like a clearly defined why. What, it, what am I here for? What am I created for? What am I supposed to do with my life? And the reason why is because a lot of people want to be motivated to do something amazing, but motivation only like is enough to get you started. It's discipline and having a why that grounds you, that keeps you going, right? So when I wake up in the morning, I don't automatically think like, hey, today's awesome. Everything's going to be amazing. I'm going to do awesome, epic stuff. Uh, I, I wake up tired and selfish and lazy, at, but I have an underlying purpose in life that drives me to do what I know I'm called to do. So having a clearly defined why. The other thing is work harder than everybody else. Now, the, the, uh, my generation, I'm considered a millennial, right? We have a bad rap for being lazy, right? We have a lot of, um, again, 35-year-old people who are living in mom and dad's house, uh, still playing video games and complaining about things on social media, complaining about politics and complaining about why society is blah, 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 all these things. And th it, there's a bad rap for people my age just not having the work ethic that my parents had. And there is a same kind of reputation that all of the younger generations will have. Um, well, you don't have to fit into that mold. And there's a lot of millennials that I've met that are hard workers. And what I found is that success isn't really as hard as you might think it is, right? A lot it, the, the reason why it is hard is because you just have to be willing to do the things that most people aren't willing to do. Where talent, where, wherever you are lacking in talent, you could make up for in hard work. In hard work, I'd rather have someone that works hard and is willing to figure it out than someone who's a rock star, talented person because that person's gonna be a prima donna, they think they know it all, they have it all together, and they're not gonna be hard workers. But the person who's willing to work hard and willing to figure it out, I know that they're able to grow. And all of the people that I found out that are hard workers, they always end up being successful in whatever they're pursuing. And so it's this common den denominator. If you wanna have the results that nobody else has then be willing to do the work that nobody else is willing to do and don't take yourself too seriously it, it, when I started my business I was like look I, I'm gonna do this thing potentially for a long time this could be a career this could be something you know I had no idea where it was gonna go uh, I wanted to make sure that if I started my business I am gonna create it the way I want to create it what is the culture gonna be like what is the environment gonna be like what is the dress code like this is my everyday work outfit, right? I didn't want to be in a stuffy corporate environment to where I had to be someone that I wasn't. And so I wanted to make sure that I had fun along the way. And so uh, surrounding myself with people, not only that are hard workers, but uh, uh, surrounding myself that I could ha uh, with people that I could have fun with. And so we have uh, in my business what we call a results only work environment. Not everybody can handle this, uh, but basically it means that I don't care how many hours you put in in the week, uh, we, you get unlimited paid time off as an employee of mine, uh, with a little caveat is so long as the work gets done, right? So one of the reasons why I didn't want to be an employee is because I was told what to do, uh, where to be, when to be there, how long I should do things. And I just didn't work that way. For me, sometimes I work better at one in the morning. Sometimes I work better, uh, if I'm at a coffee shop, sometimes I have to pull away from the office and, and get out. Uh, in front of other people. I, may, I might put on my headphones a cup of joy and get a lot more work there uh, done there than I were, would if I were at the office. And so I wanted to make sure that if I started my business, I'm gonna have an environment where I can have fun, but also my employees can have fun. And so we have this results only work environment to where we get unlimited paid time off so long as the work gets done. 
and we take intentional time out to, uh, to do things together. Like in that one video, what we do, we have fun. Uh, we go on hikes together. We have uh, team building thing. We do things like laser tag and just random shenanigans that we do uh, at least once a month together. Thank you.